thank you for joining us today, Joanne. We're excited to have you here as an expert on the White House Executive Order Initiatives. And um, can you tell us a little bit about your role and how you got involved in this initiative? Certainly. So uh, I am a product manager on the cybersecurity product management team. Um, while I've been here at Dell, I've been product manager for a data encryption and key management product. And now I am product manager driving uh, our response and our overall efforts around the White House executive order and other governmental publications that are really tightening down on cybersecurity. Great, excellent. So as you know, we're here to talk about just that. Um, we know about the recent actions that have come down from DC regarding this and specifically the White House Executive Order 1402 and, and the OMB CISA publication moving the US government toward zero trust cybersecurity principles. Would you mind helping us kind of make sense of this executive order? Well, I can try. <laughs> The White House executive order, which was published in May of 2021, is one of a series of orders issued over the past few administrations with their roots in the Comprehensive National Cybersecurity Initiative, launched by then President George W. Bush in January of 2008. The most recent order, which is applicable to governmental and critical infrastructures, seeks to enhance the ongoing efforts, touching on, amongst other areas, securing supply chains, threat vulnerability responses, and multi-factor authentication, MFA. Then, to expand on this order, the OMB Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency recently published a memorandum which deepens the requirements by calling out how to apply the Zero Trust Architecture, ZTA, approach of never trust, always verify. Both publications lay out specific actions and timelines needed to significantly improve the cybersecurity and resiliency of sensitive and critical infrastructures. Okay, well, thank you for that information. How will this defined actions bring about improved cyber resiliency? Well, cyber resiliency is all about making sure that infrastructure is protected as securely as possible and ensuring that infrastructure can continue to provide its functionality despite cyber threats and attacks. It's not really practical to create a completely hack-proof infrastructure. As we've all seen, as security controls become more sophisticated, so do the threat actors. The identified security controls and ZTA model are the best ways we know right now for ensuring that controls and processes, both independently and a part of the overall whole, are secure, can adapt as needed to respond to threats, and can recover quickly should a vulnerability be exploited. The ZTA, as defined by NIST, moves defenses from static network-based perimeters to focus on users, assets, and resources. In other words, to ensure that security controls are deployed as close to the artifacts being protected as possible and assume that any attempt to access and use these artifacts is hostile until proven otherwise. When these controls are properly implemented and maintained, they significantly increase the difficulty in the threat actor's ability to penetrate security defenses and find vulnerabilities to exploit. It can also limit the area of effect an exploit reaches, allowing the rest of the infrastructure to remain secure and running. Thank you for that. And, and how would these orders impact businesses? Well, the impact to businesses will evolve over time. The immediate effect will be with critical infrastructures and businesses contracting and supplying the U.S. government, eventually working its way outwards to all industries. It's long been understood that cyber threats have to be dealt with as attacks such as viruses and ransomware have been a part of our lives and headlines for quite some time. These publications will give businesses a good place to start, a plan to help them set up and deploy a secure infrastructure instead of having to figure it out all on their own. Thank you, Joanne. Um, that gives us some insight into why this executive order has been um, initiated from the White House. Um, the White House executive order also calls out the standardization of playbook responses. 
How does this help organizations fight malicious actors? Well, by standardizing on a set of procedures, these infrastructures will have a clear set of steps to handle incidences and vulnerabilities. And why is this important? Well, a standardized playbook will include the learnings and experiences gained from across all the included infrastructures. This ensures a comprehensive approach to handling incidents and a confidence that the situation has been properly dealt with. No one entity will have to determine their own uh, set of procedures and understandings. They can each lean on and build on the collective knowledge of all. Great, thank you. And are there any current products in Dell's portfolio that could help customers remain in compliance with the White House executive order? Well, to list just a few examples, products like PowerMax and Networking OS 10 offer the CACPIV authentication to meet the very specialized requirements of U.S. federal and critical infrastructures. PowerEdge with iDRAC provides strong security tools to help customers meet the White House executive orders around MFA, secure component verification, and software build materials. While PowerProtect enhances supply chain security through the auditing of secure trust relationships and employing automated tools to identify potential vulnerabilities. Dell Technologies takes security very seriously, and our products will continue to strengthen and evolve their security toolboxes to meet ever-increasing security demands. Wow, thank you, Joanne. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate all of the insight that you've given us about this executive order and highlighting some of the ways that businesses can become more cyber resilient. We look forward to having you our next time. Well, thank you for having me. I very much appreciate it. Thank you, Shakita. Thank you, Sivan. No problem. Thank you so much, Joanne. And if anybody out there, if you have any more uh, questions for us, feel free to reach out. We'll have some links in the description. Our emails will be listed below as well.